Earlier this week, there was a video on Twitter because obviously climate change is in the news all the time. And it's just, to me, I've wondered is like, where are the Dr. Fauci's of the climate change? Where, who is the expert in the world? Because you would think, I mean, we had the Apollo space program and you knew all the astronauts and the people that were kind of the face of the movement of what we were doing. And so it's like, where is the face of all, you know, cause they always say that the, the science is settled. So, but who, who's the Dr. Fauci of the climate change movement? Who's the expert, the elder statesman that knows all the facts and data and is always showing everybody the facts and data. Cause that's one thing I never see. And I do see a lot of hyperventilation about CO2 in the atmosphere, and we got to do something about you know carbon dioxide. And so I saw this clip the other day. So who I don't know, I can't remember who this guy was. I think he's a politician, whatever. And so he's on this talk show. I think it's from the UK. And you know, before he says anything, he asks this you know climate change activist that's next to him that's hyperventilating hyperventilating about CO2. He's like, how much of the atmosphere is CO2? And so she had no idea, said she wasn't a scientist. And he tells her, and it was one of those moments that was like a double take. So we're going to watch the clip and kind of give some commentary. When I asked, well, just about Alice, you've been speaking most of the night. When I, when, when I... When I asked Tanya Plibersek... We'll fact was, check that one for you. Yes. <laughs> when I asked Tanya Plibersek, was the deputy leader of the Labor Party and the potential deputy prime minister, was carbon dioxide the big issue in relation to climate change? And she said, yes. I then <laughs> said, well, that being the case, what percentage of the atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide? And she said, I don't know. And I said, hang on, you don't know what percentage of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide and yet you're prepared to stand the economy on its head to address a problem, the detail of which you don't know. So when I then explained that the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, Alice, is how much? <laughs> Alice, how much of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? To answer Alice? the question, Scott Morrison has said he's Al- using how climate much? change Alice, and how that much? he wants to She's do something giving about Alice, how much carbon dioxide is the problem? How much carbon dioxide is there in the atmosphere? I'm not a scientist. Too much. I don't oh. know. I'm a well, hang on. If you're going to argue the case, you ought to know it's 0.04% and of that 0.04% human beings around the world 0.04%. create 3%. And of that yeah. 3%, Australia creates 1.3%. So for the 1.3% of 3% of 0.04%, we then decide to have a national economic suicide. Alan, now, Alan, you're Alan, Alan, That's I'm, I'm happy you so that small. That, when I saw that clip, I was like, what? You know, because you hear people on the right like, climate change is a hoax. And so you think that it's kind of like when we were growing up in the 80s, it was the uh, the ozone, the whole yeah. ozone layer. It's the too many CFCs. The argon, the carbon Too much dioxide. freon in our cars is getting released and our refrigerators. The, there's, the whole no- the ozone fears. is getting bigger. And then I guess we stopped using those. They went away. Or I don't know what happened, but that emergency went away. And so you got all these people hyperventilating about CO2. And I never... Like I said, we're like, where's the Fauci? Where's the guy that's the head head cheese that's the super expert on this topic? Because they all are like, the science is settled. Okay, well, who? Who are the people? What are the, what's the data? What's the facts? What are the numbers? And he's like, 0.04% is CO2. It's like, what? Seriously? So, Chunky, you got some things to say on this topic. Right. Just Let me preface this argument. So... I'm all for stopping, reducing pollution, and taking care of the earth because it's the water we drink, it's the food we eat, and it's the air we breathe. I'm all for that. But the whole notion that humans are driving climate, they're the leading cause drivers of climate, is ridiculous. You can Is that fake news? Does that mean it's fake news? Because that's one of the narratives I mean, that yeah, it is. tells it's, us. It's, right? not, it's not true. It's hu- I mean, you can even like, simply just think about this way. Okay, before humans were here and before we're releasing all this carbon, if you even want to get into, we'll get into carbon later, what drove climate before? What, what, what do you think drives climate? Change. It's the sun. 
that we don't account for the sun. And it's, it's hydrogen. also the, the orbital cycles around the sun. Mm-hmm. Um, a big, if you look in the Milikovitch cycles, those uh, orbital cycles, those are on the bigger scale times of how we rotate around the sun, mm-hmm. basically just, and then the precession of the earth and our axial tilt that play, but that's on a longer scales. Mm-hmm. And now to get an actual visualization for this, I want you guys, we're going to look at this graph. Okay. So we're going to look at, we're going to look at this one. Well, this is actually a long term, but I want to focus on, so the, what's the definition of climate? What's the difference between climate and weather? Weather is days and weeks. Climate is long term. And the problem with it is all these climate change things of rising temperature. Um, like, for instance, I'm going to look at climate change graph and I'm going to bet you it starts at the 1850s to now. Oh, look at that. Very coincidentally. Ah. Starts here in this low. It's a quinky so dink. From the eight, um, Getting into more recent Very times. So you guys have heard of the Little Ice Age, correct? That was from approximately around 1250 to guess when that ended. Ended in the 1850s. We went through the Little Ice Age, the coldest it's ever been basically in the last 10,000 years. So this is why I brought up the difference between climate and weather. So the whole climate change argument, they want to take this little, little segment here and say, oh, look, from here we're rising but they're missing so much other data. It's like you're playing a football game and instead of like taking the scores at the end of the game, you're taking, you're judging the scores off one play and deciding, oh, there, game over from yeah, that one play. Yeah, they didn't happened in the first half. The so, graph kind of looks like a uh, <laughs> Pelosi stock pick. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say that. How do you think I... So, um, girl's killing it. So the current... Her teeth may be falling out, but, or have fallen out. Yeah. She's got bad denture problems, but... So I think looking over the 500 million period, 500 million year period is a little too long and we can't actually have direct right. human causation. Perfect thing is the current geological epoch we're in, which is the Holocene. So that's around the last 11,000 to 700 years. That's that time period where, I mean, since then we've invented writing, we've made society, civilization. Mm-hmm. So you can say humans and climate, there's a correlation and that's what we've been in. And then this whole temp, because the earth goes through their glacial periods and interglacial periods. We're in that kind of interglacial period where it's actually really nice to live here. Um, and we're actually in the climatic optimum. So, you know, a big thing too, we're like, oh guys, record temperatures, record temperatures. It's just not true. Especially if you look over the last, if you start from 1850, yes. Cause that's the end of the last, the mini ice, the little ice age. So obviously temperatures are actually rebound to the normal. So present day temperatures right now, to the last 10,000 years. So essentially over the last 10,000 years, 97% of that time, it's been hotter than it is today. Isn't that just baffling? Like the, the, it's there. This is, it also shows the carbon too. That's just. So here's the temperatures. Um, this was the start of the Holocene, basically the younger driest but period. Dump the shisa. Where it went crazy. But look, so we're here. It was way hotter. Be- look, here's the medieval warm period about two degrees hotter. So we're actually the coldest it's been in the last 10,000 years. And now we're actually just on the normal cycle of going back up. Yeah. Okay, I think we're getting a little off base. Okay, with the so nuclear. back to the Whatever. climate models. Well, Chunky. This, this just sudden revelation kind of hit me and I started laughing because the juxtaposition of these two charts is hilarious. The juxtaposition. Like, if you look at this, you're like, whoa, that's, that's a real, real problem. But then you actually look at it in a greater scale. You're like, oh, that's completely normal with how Earth has been changing for central and then so we're actually in a very very nice period we're actually in the climactic optimum where it's like kind of the best it is for earth because if we want to look on a bigger even scale so uh, hold we on could go back at, go back to that real quick did they get nasa one go back or to one? where we just were so we're looking at the co2 there mm-hmm. so seven thousand years ago when we were living in caves the co2 started to rise and so it's I mean, if you look at the curve of how it's increasing, it's really kind of moderate. It's like not a not a big deal because there wasn't modern civilization five thousand years ago. It was dumping tons of CO two. I mean, everybody was burning stuff for heating and cooking. But here's another problem, actually, too. You raise a really, really good point with the CO two. How much of CO two emissions are actually humans? 
How much of it are we? We're well. Are, we every time we exhale, we emit CO two. Yeah. Yes, but I'm we saying like the, the cow, fossil. The cows. So the big farting, one is the fossil. Right? Let me re- clarify the question. Yeah. Okay. How much of the CO two emissions is fossil fuels? How much is it? Does anybody know? I, I don't. I cannot give you a like an answer of the whole I don't of the carbon emissions. I'm a scientist, chunky. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not just, a scientist. I don't want to give you a what's the incorrect answer? answer, but I do know science. I will uh, give you this. Yes. Um. That seagrass will absorb more CO2 than like a rainforest and like kelp and seagrass yes. and all of that. You made a very interesting point with the ocean. I'm going to go back to that. Yeah. But, so, so human given uh, fossil fuel burning c- carbon, 12% of the carbon in the atmosphere. And a very fascinating study here, you guys can check it out yourself, is the world atmosphere CO2. And the way they see this is by seeing the carbon-14 and the fossil fuels that we burn is like a car. It doesn't. Uh, it's like different isotope of carbon because it's been sitting for five million years. It lost the half life. So from this study here, here's just a little abstract of it. You can read it through yourself. Only tw- from 1750 to 2018, that whole 250, 268 year period, 12 percent of the carbon is from humans burning fossil fuels. Just. 12%. And remember the chart we looked at where it's carbon 0.04%? You're telling me this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is what drives the climate change. That's my whole problem with it. Science! This is where it's like, I'm all for stopping the pollution and stuff, but I, I, I really want to actually focus on what changes, changes the climate and how we can prevent it. Instead of like fighting climate, we should be going with the flow with it. Oh, it's we're in a emergency. heating period and sea levels are rising? Panic. Okay, how do we best adapt to that we should be adapting to it not fighting because if we're trying to fight it we're 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 fighting a losing fight if we're trying to change the climate i we don't control it that's you know we can terraform mars but and we are interfering with the control of it you know in other words what turns uh co2 back into oxygen just this the oxygen plants plants. Plants. and And they grow bigger yeah but we're covering (laughs) the earth with concrete and not yeah. a lot of plants in between the concrete. I see lots yeah. of plants. No, in between I, concrete? this is what I mean. Yeah. This is what should, we ground, should be focusing on. Not just trying to Keeping take down our carbon rich. emissions. Absolutely. We should everywhere. be focusing on, oh, let's yards, actually take care of, let's get less of these pollutants mm-hmm. as well. And honestly, carbon's not a pollute. If you really look at it, the same people are calling, oh, we need to take down nitrogen. Well, that's 78% of enough. the air we breathe in our atmosphere. It's really not. They're just labeling good things bad. That's Maybe all they're doing. Should. They're just saying something's bad when it's really not bad for us. So I think we Seaweed. should actually be focusing on, we should be, that's exactly what I, this is my whole gripe with it. Instead of focusing on that, we're focusing on, oh, we got to carbon tax people. We got to reduce your individual carbon. T-. That's not yeah. the solution. We should actually be looking at how we can take care of the earth. And another yeah, interesting thing How with can we carbon take care and of the temperature, Earth, President Chunky, what would you do? Well, I want to. Here's the five. This is if we want to get into lay, big lay time the lumber scale. down. Let's just with carbon and temperature. There's really no clear correlation, but the correlation you see, it's actually a temperature rise, and then the carbon follows in the release, and that is why. Remember, I was talking about the oceans, is because when the oceans heat up they release the carbon that's stored. When the oceans cool down, they keep the carbon stored in there. So it's not really like, it's oh. The ocean's warming. I think the big thing is, oh, it's how is carbon the leading cause of climate change when carbon is follows temperature? If it's, com- if it's coming after the temperature rise, how is that the one that made the temperature rise? You see what I'm like? You got all yeah, those fires happening not, in the UK because, and they're you know the media is just like it, the temperature is real hot. It's dry. There's fires everywhere. Neighborhoods are going up, uh, and some of them I think have been set on purpose. There's always a percentage that are arson. It's like how much, you know, especially the big open areas out west and like California. Oftentimes, you get people that are just doing stupid shit, lighting fireworks off or having a fire where it's, where it's dry and it's. Yeah, you got people that are arsonists that do it on purpose, and so you you got a lot of that, a lot of different reasons why that shit's burnt. It's dry in the UK, and a lot of fires are happening. And the media is just like, "See, yeah. this is the climate change. It's like we're just gonna burn to death. Everybody's gonna, it's gonna be a cauldron of fire." Eventually, that's all gonna happen anyway. Meaning, whether there are people or not, you know, there's gonna be droughts, there's gonna be storms, there's gonna be lightning that sets 
you know, uh, trees on fire and that stuff is going to happen. That's outside of our control. Junk, what you got? What's the next I like this chart? One. The meat, so over the last 15 Caroline, years, we're just looking chart? at it. Like we're the climate change. That's so crazy. That's the thing that's really pisses me off. There are actually climate change is scary because it happens on a way bigger scale. What we're seeing is nothing. If we're just looking in here, this is really look at this temperature differences. All of these are followed by 15,000 years right ago. here. The younger dryest. This was the mass extinction of the megafauna when all the mammoths, saber tooth tigers, deers and I mean, I'm sorry, horses and camels in North America were extinct and wiped off because of this stuff. So we should be if stuff like this were to happen, this is what we see. And this is what we're in the climactic optimum. So we're wow. in this. A we're actually in a beautiful time with the climate and we're actually it's getting beautiful, man. So this climate it's change where we're warming now is it's actually just climate, getting man. back to the normal. I mean, and this is my other gripe with climate change. The climate is always changing. It's like we're not supposed to stop it and be at this one temperature. So. Would you rather have the earth warming or cooling? Myself, personally, I'd rather have it warming than cooling. Because even if you look at back in the history, too, um, this chart is really good for this. Is Look, so the medieval warm period, all these periods, if you look back in history, these are when golden ages happened and when humanity really progressed. When it gets cold again, that's when like the dark ages come in. And it's all when bad times in history because of well, with the, the yeah, colder the temperature Rome. well the cold temperatures they have less crop yields and there's just mass mm -hmm. starvation death and disease so i'm all for more warming rather than cooling the well, Rome empire collapsed i would follow this and then a lot you had the fire Fahrenheit. the library of alexandria burned. celsius it kind of sucks too it's <laughs> it's good for like Sciencey stuff, but science. it's not good for like yeah. average human body. I don't know what the rest of the time. world's thinking. She blinded me with science. Basically, we've raised at zero point eight degrees Celsius mm -hmm. since seventeen fifty. But if we just go back a thousand years to the medieval warming period, it was two degrees hotter, like a degree in, like. So, like the average temperature, if it was like. My whole point with this is climate is not the main cause of this. I mean, carbon is not the main cause of the climate change. It's just not. So everything that they're basically saying is an emergency. When you look back it's completely a little normal. farther in the record, you go, oh, wow, this is actually pretty normal where we're at. Yeah, it's complete. This is not what should a be big happening. Deal. It'd be like if the little ice age ended and we're getting back to normal, 80s. this is perfectly fine. I forget. So you'd but be good. It was something like, you know, 2012. The science is settled. Michael Moore. Didn't he make a movie about that? Weren't we supposed to be underwater? No, that like was a Al Gore. Ago? Uh, Inconvenient Truth, and in, I think it came out. That was like twenty years ago, almost. I guess yeah, that's I was ready, it was. I was ready to sell my Florida property because it was supposed to be underwater. Yeah, yeah. But Obama and everybody buying oceanfront property, the banks are still lending on it. So See, obviously they're not worried about flooding. Flooding rising. is real with climate change when it happens. Look at this on this scale. Sea levels rose four hundred feet here. Whoa, that's because the ice was melting, right? Yes. So the bottom it. line and all this climate shenanigans this is, is that when you look at the big historic record going back like tens of thousands of years, the climate used to be a lot worse than it is now. So and we're so not going to die. We're kind of in the range of where we should be. So we should start reading 3% man faster. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, eventually, I mean... Not faster, when you look just at more times when well, you when you look yeah. well 10 to 15 obviously but when you look at um because elon's done the calculations on how much what surface area of, would you of the united states would you need for solar panels mm. and it's like uh i think 100 miles by 100 miles is the uh the dimension of the air surface area that you would need in the united states like maybe somewhere in the desert to capture enough solar power and and turn it into batteries and he had the same thing um like the battery it may have been big, a bigger area for solar panels but the batteries that he needed to store enough of that to power the whole united states was like 10 by 10 or something like that miles like 100 square miles or something like that of just the big square tesla batteries and so him he said this, we're doing this we're building this so we'll have that capacity we'll have that solar capacity with batteries to that way, you know, when it's cloudy or at night, when there's yeah. no sun, 
you've got the battery power to keep everything going. That's interesting, but I don't know where we get like 10 square miles of lithium. Um, you know, I don't know how this works. Well, it's the battery packs, the big, the big ones, the big uh, super capacity ones that they're they're installing those all over the world. The utility companies are buying them because they hold a lot of power, and so when they have peak times, like in Australia, especially where they built some of these like you know farms of these battery, the the large battery yeah. packs that Tesla makes. Then when it gets real hot in the summer and they need extra power, it just flips over to the Tesla batteries. Yeah, yeah. And then because um, otherwise they would have had to do blackouts, rolling blackouts because they just didn't have enough power. And so their utility companies all over the you know the country are installing those farms of those battery packs as well hmm. to step in when you know that'll because re- they can charge during the off peak times and then when they need peak energy the batteries have it that's pretty cool you know i I was driving home from orlando not too long ago and it was interesting land passing by the solar farms where you just saw acres and acres of solar panels now Mm. i don't know if that electricity is just being stored or if it's just offsetting what's coming from the power plants at the time and they you know in the daytime it's great and then they probably subsidize it with coal burning at night i don't know um i don't think we have like the here they at use time. natural gas and generators to yeah. gen- where we live but the the battery storage that you're talking about though that's like theoretical i don't think that's no, actually not, in place right now is it no it is in place tesla builds these like okay. giant batteries yeah well they're like um they look like a giant locker like a gym locker they're like this they're big square things and they're full of those lithium batteries. And so, so the power plants are using those now. To they're, well, the, they're putting them out, you know, because they have the power lines and the substations and all that. So they're they're creating these substations that are just rows and rows of these battery packs. And so these battery packs are fully charged. And so when they need extra capacity, the battery, you know, the system just draws it from the batteries. Are they the self-charging battery? Yeah. It's all like a computer and everything. It knows how to top it off and make it last long. It's solar paneled, but are they the self-charging battery? No, well, the, mechanism with the power companies, they... they do have some solar arrays, but the power companies are just buying them and connecting them to their grids. That's what I was. So ask. you know, because the batteries are you know can go days. Like if you lose all power, they can go days. They hold so much power, and so for the power companies, when they have those peak times and they need, need to provide extra electricity, it's stored in the battery packs. Mm-hmm. And then off hours when people aren't using it, the battery packs charge themselves. And so no matter you know what time of the year it is, it's like there's always enough power. You don't have blackout. So it's pretty cool. It is. But at the end of the day, it's still mostly fossil fuels that are charging these things. 